this is all the stuff that we talk about. Right? We have all the test tools, right? Hardware test ports, you know, and those those test functions being available on VMs, right? And also the, what we mean by the test suites are these are all the like different test methodologies. You know, I talk about being able to emulate a VXLAN network, right, with many many many, many VTAPs, right, to test the control plane and then emulate the control plane to test the uh, data plane and so on and so forth, right? So those are the different uh, test methodologies that we have, right? So that's Kind of one side, well, this is what we call test provisioning, right? Uh, on the other hand, oops. So on this side, what we are showing is basically um, we, with our velocity product, which we talked a little bit about last time, we are giving you the ability to define your, your test bed topology, basically, right? So let's say if you're testing a DUT, you can go into a UI interface, which Yuji is gonna show you, and you can, and on, on, it's kind of like Visio, and you can just basically drag and drop and define your topology, right? and you can define where the virtual DUT sit, and you can also define where you want to test ports. The work, you know, it could be a physical, it could be a virtual test port, where you want the test ports to connect to this test topology and what kind of tests you want to run, right? So you kind of define that. So now last time when we talked about this, it was mostly, we show, I think we showed you the UI and it was mostly intended for you know, someone in a test lab, right? Defining the topology and be able to run tests, right, in the lab. So what we are now doing is uh, we doing we, what we have done is we are doing more uh, integration right with uh, Jenkins right so Jenkins is basically kind of a uh, orchestration automation tool right for the CI guys right so basically the idea is when the engineers check code into something like a GitHub right generate a software build right and then Jenkins will pick up the build right and then it will uh, uh, basically run the test jobs right. Um, so we have the Jenkins expert there. Mark's, Correct me if I do it I wrong. Mark's got a demo to do on that. Okay, it's going to talk about it. So wouldn't that be nice that you know? Because a lot of times, you know, right now with CI, what we're seeing is that when people, when CI, when Jenkins create the test environment to test the application, it's mostly at a compute level. Right? It's really testing, you know, setting up a, you know, an application on a server and just running functional tests. Mm -hmm. Right, now, but now with a lot of this cloud and OpenStack applications and so on, and Neutron being you know one third of the OpenStack pillar, right, compute storage and network, you know what we're starting to see more and more is also the ability to uh, not just test connectivity for the application, but actually test, you know, have a realistic uh, network test bed. Yeah, I think, I think this could be huge, honestly, right. integrating with Jenkins, because you might have the functional test always, always pass, and you'll find it could be anything from a firewall rule change to just the change in the underlying application. Yeah, exactly. It really affects performance. Right. And yeah. I've seen, I don't think I've seen any, any vendor in the right. network space yet advocate you know, CI methodologies yes. right. where you're going with this presentation. And I think it's right. amazing. And typically, a, a CI build farm requires a lot of hardware to implement and so you're probably going to have if you're doing ci some dedicated servers for the for that ci pipeline and each one is configured with its configuration so that pipeline has a specific configuration for it so let's say you want to look at vxlan or some sort of vpn you're using ipsec tunnels it's going to have that configuration across there and test everything across that that path but if you want to change the configuration you're going to have to make a whole new well, that's Canada, why a lot right? of the work that you know I'm working on, like you know, Matt Chu is looking at you know vendor APIs, right, and being yep. able to orchestrate like that change dynamically. So you'll set aside hardware, which yep. is your lab, but run dynamic unit tests to reconfigure it and, and test you know just various things yep. in a. And then you're left though lab. with a, a serial process where you can't start your next test till this one finishes, right? Right, right. Because right. it's it's being used, it's being reserved for that purpose. Look what it does today, right? We do stupid stuff in code and like we forget to indent or we use a, we use a tab instead of a space yeah. and it will tell us. Yeah. We do stupid stuff on infrastructure all the That's time, right. but we don't have the methodologies to catch that. Yeah. So, you know what I mean? Since we have this slide up, I'm going to point out one of our partners is Ravello. 
uh, we're using them now. We, we're able to, we have our own CI pipelines here. We do testing it as well. So we're able to put our virtual products in there and do these tests we're discussing. But we're doing it on one flavor of, of Linux. You know, maybe it's uh, Red Hat or Ubuntu or Debian or something. Now we want to test it on another flavor of Linux and see how that works. So instead of rebuilding a whole new pipeline with that, we put both pipelines up in Ravello Cloud and it it's, can be hosted in the public cloud, but we can actually move our VMware virtual machines up there and do that. So I just want to point that out. It's a call out to them, and we've been doing some cool stuff with them. So basically, the way that we envision is that, you know, the Jenkin administrator, right, when he designed the, the jobs, right, for all the test cases, uh, basically, he will go into our UI, right, to design basically a network testbed topology, right, specific for those test cases. And, so you bas and then you can save those as a, a topology template. And basically, at runtime, you know, Jenkins, when they launch a test job, it can actually then talk to Velocity and, 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 and essentially create a virtual instance of that network test bed, right? So basically all this stuff, you know, so, so with CI, right, we need, we need to take advantage of virtualization because we need to launch many, many instances of this that run a bunch of test jobs in parallel because typically people have like a six, eight hour test window mm -hmm. to run a bunch of test cases. So this, the idea of this stuff is all automated. And basically, we get the job, you know, we get the handshake from Jenkins. We know that, oh, we need to launch this particular topology a number of times, right? And typically, the deployment model is, like you said, you know, we, you know, we launch it on servers, right? These are x86 servers, you know, basically our, our running farm. many, many of these instances of virtual topologies, right? But what we're seeing is uh, people are starting to realize that before long, they ended up having to run their own server farms, right, just to do CIs. Right, so in our own case, we have like five, six racks of super micro servers, right? And we basically needed to hire. Well, not you know, to mention that virtual topology is similar, but it isn't your production infrastructure. Right. And the big idea behind CI is we do testing much more regularly right. than at the tail end. So the one thing I'm, I'm questioning is, is how do you handle when customers want to do their testing and they don't have a test bed? Exactly. Thank you. I mean, like, <laughs> but but no, like you've got it. Right. It's virtual in right. this case, right? Yeah. So, exactly. so it's not there. It's not a. It's not a like for like right. of their. So basically, what we say, what we oh, could no. say to the customer is that, hey, rather than investing in all these servers, what we can do is, uh, we can. Uh, yeah. You can go to the Spiring Cloud. Well, that's not my infrastructure either. Huh? That is, uh, but you don't have to invest. You don't. So you don't have to buy the servers. You don't have to. You don't need the capex. And you don't have to procure, you don't have to run the service. And basically, we can help you create those, uh, you know, virtual network test beds. So do you support, but, for you example, know, last, do, you know, do you support in, different virtual switches, different hypervisors, different, exactly. like, do you, you know, different hardware configurations? Like, are you looking at potentially, uh, like UCS is very popular now in the enterprise. Like are, like, are you putting things like HP, UCS, things like that to be able to get, you know, a, a better test than yeah. commodity servers? So, right. so basically what, what we've been talking about is called the VPTC. It's a virtual private test cloud. And it's, it's just a design blueprint of how to integrate these products together. We can do it on any hardware, even on public cloud infrastructure, because we can now move these virtual machines to a public cloud environment. So we have implemented that already in a, in a cloud provider here in the Bay Area, and that's called the VCT Lab, the Virtual Cloud Test Lab. And that's where we'll rent you this infrastructure on a monthly basis, and you can use this. But if you want to have the VPTC design on HP hardware or Cisco hardware or something else, we, we have that blueprint available and you can implement it yourself or we can have partners help you implement that. Right. That's what we're talking about. And we're actually looking for feedback on this. So that's why we're talking about it is we're not sure we got it right. We need a lot of input on this and we have a lot of big companies that are, so the funny thing, I've only been here a few months here at Spirant. Um, I'm going to all these customers who said, I've bought millions of dollars of Spirant hardware, but it's in that building and my cloud team's in that building, building a new lab or across the world. How do I get that hardware that's to test that other stuff? And so we're, our customers are begging us for this design and we're helping them transition these thousands of man hours of tests that they have over to their cloud infrastructure. And they have the same concerns. They want to test it on this hardware, that hardware, whatever. And even network switches, right? You gotta have things the like- The whole nine yards, Cisco, the whole stack. You gotta have all, you know, all these vendors in there, Juniper, Brickit, yeah. to be able to have, yep. you know. Yeah. Ballot tests. Well, with, the, so. with the advancements in, in all the software that we've seen lately, a lot of customers, they're choosing to do their testing from a, from a hardware perspective in the same 
area sure. as production because they're able to segment things yeah. safely. Exactly. And that, that's what I was getting at. I would feel a little wary. I, I'm, I don't want to be that guy, but yeah. I'd be a little wary that that's not a total valid test because there's always going to be small differences between what you run in prod and yeah. what you run. As, as much as you want to make it similar, there will be small differences. So, um, how uh, another customer is doing this, they actually have a unique live network that handles, uh, I'll just tell you, it's cell phone traffic. So it's a large cell phone provider and they can't really they try to replicate the live world in the lab but you know they can only do so much so, be, so what they've be. done is every uh, month or so i forget the details they have a change window a four hour change window where they can upgrade stuff mm -hmm. and they'll take three hours of that to do the upgrade and then one hour for testing right and so they have all this test infrastructure as part of their change window and before they roll it back to production they they fail over data centers and they do that testing right there in the live yes. environment that is exactly. So they what stress test it because that's not a that's not a mirror of your infrastructure. That is your infrastructure. Right. Exactly. You have the downtime to say, okay, here's when I'm going to make a configuration change. Same thing that developers do. Right. right. Developers take this period of time. They're like, okay, this is when I'm going to push a change to test. Right. We have all of these CI jobs that run to make sure it does what we want it to do. It goes through all the checksums. All right, we're going into production. Mm -hmm. Same exact thing can be done for network configuration. Right. Mm -hmm. So that's exactly why you know we took that blueprint approach. Is that you know you basically. You know, can have this kind of integration, and the whole idea is to automate the process of, you know, launching the network test beds, you know, to match the Jenkins jobs, mm -hmm. right? And then, and then the blueprint, you know, you can do that over your own, uh, you know, server farm service, you know, using your own very specific settings. Or what we're seeing sometimes is uh, is kind of look at it from a development cycle point of view, right? You don't necessarily like a lot of times you want you know for the nightly build, mm -hmm. or maybe even sometimes the hourly build, a lot of times it's good enough to do a functional test. Mm -hmm. right? So sometimes people, uh, so this is actually why we're seeing that there actually is even some, uh, we, some requests we're seeing that people really like the idea of you know, being able to do those kind of functional tests, like for example, you know, uh, and leveraging uh, like Amazon Google Lite kind of public cloud infrastructure, right? Because the performance is good enough and this functional test, you don't, Necessary need to be on exactly the same hardware, yeah. right? It's good to have it as an option. And then, and then you know, once in a while, you do need to do, do those very specific, you know, performance scale tests and so on. Maybe those cases that you can schedule those jobs to run on dedicated, you know, labs and so on. So it's kind of a spectrum of uh, uh, models that we see throughout the development cycle. Also. Okay.